I'd like to call the Waitley School Committee to order at 401. It's January 4th. And uh, review and approve the minutes from November 16th. We haven't met for almost two months, so. Uh, I'll move to approve the minutes from November. I'll second it. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Um, should we wait on the financials for Maureen or? Sure. Just in case she, she has a question. I just noticed one, you know, I was just looking through it, Shelly. Stupid things like uh, page, page one of the expenditures. Uh, what was it? A dollar. A dollar eighty-five over for finance dues. Is is that something that we should put more money in that line item for next year? Or is Yeah, so when we talk about the budget for next year, you'll see that I talk about adjustments to expense accounts. And yeah. while that's only a dollar eighty-five, yeah, yeah, I mean those are the things we look at historically. Okay. Um, to make sure that we have everything budgeted properly. Yeah. I see more reads on, so I'll um, we just did the we just opened Maureen and uh we did the minutes and I said well, let's wait for you to do the financials because you, you might have a question or two. So Okay. That was the, that you know there was some other minuses, but that one dollar and eighty-five cent caught my eye. So I thought I'll do better next ready. time. Huh? I'll do better next time with my budgeting. <laughs> it was dues, so I'm not sure how you can budget around your dues. You know, next year you, know, you might put extra money, and the following year they may raise the dues again. So, well, and that's one of those account lines that is split between five schools. So, you know, to get that exact dollar amount or penny, it's a little bit. Can difficult. you get one of the other schools to take that dollar eighty five <laughs> away from us, please, so we don't show a negative? We'll try. <laughs> All right. You want me to jump in, Maureen? Or? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Uh, so there were 17 warrants signed since last meeting. This is probably a bigger warrant report for you all. But again, like Bob said, we haven't met since November. So you're looking at a couple of months of warrants here. The total was $87,379.68. Um, there's no new concerns to report. So I don't actually have a formal report. I didn't send anything out formally to you all, but I did share the expense reports through December 31st. And I am happy to take questions for whether it's general fund or school choice. Um, and then we will get into FY23 budget later when it comes up on the agenda. I just noticed one other thing, the um, school committee um, what conference that we went over like $500. It wasn't like we went partying or anything like that down there, but I know we have $400 budgeted and it ended up being $958. Is that a combination of a few things? Yeah, no, I, I, it's strictly from the conference. And I think um, district wide, this is a line item that is one of those tricky ones to budget because you might not have anyone go in a particular school year. So that 400 could be a savings or you have two people go and you only planned on one. Um, 400 is low. I mean, you can't even get your hotel covered for $400. So it's something that's carried over year to year. We probably could look into increasing it a little bit for next year, but I likely wouldn't increase it much because again, no one might be able to go. So we don't want to inflate that line item too high. Right. And we usually can move funds from another line, whether it's within school committee or another, you know, savings that we have, because sometimes we don't go over budget in a certain line. So I typically try not to fiddle too much with school committee stuff. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Okay. So now we're on to the principal's report. If nobody has, nobody else has any questions. Hi everyone and happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. We're off to a busy start. Um, so I was trying to think back to what I've already told you because it has been two months and I think that's, I don't know if in my four years here, three and a half years, we've ever gone two months without 
maybe. Um, so I know in our November school committee meeting, I mentioned that the fourth grade was holding a food drive. Um, and so the results of that, with the help of our generous families, the fourth grade students were able to donate 635 pounds of food to the Northampton Survival Center. Wow. A big shout out goes to the fourth grade students and Mrs. Appanell and Ms. Preston Wells for taking on the service project and to all the staff and families who contributed. Just a really is a really good time for the kids to be thinking about service projects. Kind of it, it kind of changed some of the the mood around here when kids started stopped focusing on on how difficult things are. We and when we all started Stop focusing on how difficult things are with the pandemic and thought about some of our um, our old passions, which is to to do service projects. Um, in conjunction with the food drive, the fourth grade also organized a march to raise awareness of food insecurity, patterned after Monty's March. The entire school walked a half mile road around the perimeter of our campus holding signs they made to bring awareness to the problem of food insecurity. Our younger students walked the half mile and our older students walked it twice. It was a beautiful and chilly day for our mini Monty's March. And if you didn't see it, there were some pictures in the Gazette recorder. Um, and now that we're done with the food drive, we are, the global leaders are holding a coat drive. In Western Massachusetts, we're welcoming new neighbors from many different nations, especially Afghanistan. These families left their country in a hurry and have arrived with very few belongings. The global leaders are leading us in helping by collecting gently used coats, jackets, snow pants, hats, and gloves or mittens. The coat drive will finish on January 14th. A Century of Care Alliance will distribute our donations to those in greatest need. So anyone who's listening, if you have coats or other winter gear that you'd like to donate, please get in touch with the school. We'd be happy to take it from you. Um, Is that for kids or adults or both? Both. Um, and hats off to Terry Anderson, Sally Rice, and Paula King for their work with the global leaders on projects like this. And the global leaders were also busy. Um, we've really missed our all school meetings. You know, it, it was one of the, the, the things that I really loved when I started here was uh, having the all school meeting and we're a small enough school that we can all gather together in one spot. Um, but since COVID, that's no longer the case. Um, but we're, we are still unable to hold all school meetings. However, in December, we were able to safely hold the pandemic version of the all school meeting, which is now the half school meeting. The global, global leader prepared a presentation about festivals of light, which are held around the world. He taught us about Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, Solstice, and Lunar New Year. They did a marvelous job preparing and presenting, and it was just wonderful to gather as a larger group again safely. And the last thing I want to talk about is reviewing health and safety protocols. Um, given the rising numbers of COVID-19 in our area, we've reviewed our practices here at Waitley to be sure that we're providing the safest environment possible. We've rever reverted back to some of our precautionary measures that were in place last year, mainly in regard to social distancing. We were pleased to be able to have students working in small groups this year, but we have put that practice on hold <coughs> just temporarily. It's my hope that we'll start to see the COVID numbers fall once again once we get past the holiday spike. Our first priority is and always has been to keep all the members of our school community safe and healthy. But we are also committed to doing whatever we can to cut down on the number of days that students are absent from school. And I want to thank the West community for supporting us in those efforts. The end. Any questions? No. Nope. No. Nope. Um, so I don't know if we have any public comment. No. Okay. Then we are on to unfinished business COVID nineteen update. So um, while there's a lot going on with COVID nineteen, there hasn't been a, there's not a, a lot going on in the schools in the sense of a change where we were prior to break. Um, we are right now waiting for the pool testing that we did yesterday um, to come back. Um, it looks like based on when they start, the, they enter into the system, they're behind where they normally are. So we probably aren't gonna see them until tomorrow morning or late this evening. 
Um, but we're very curious to see how the, the community there. We did change over, and I sent this information out to all families and such, so I'm sure you all have seen it, but are reporting to a dashboard rather than another email and then another email saying the same thing over and over again um, so that people can kind of track what's going on in their community schools um, and what's going on overall. So um, we have that in place. Um, we'll see how long we keep that in place. If, you know, there's a lot of hope that there's going to be a spike and it's going to come way down afterwards and then we'll change whatever we're doing to fit the um, COVID environment. Um, so we have that. There is going to be, um, we are working on vac vaccination buses. Um, I know they were talking with the Wheatley community as well. Um, Chris, I haven't heard as of today if it was being confirmed. But, um, they're looking at two buses, um, possibly the 14th and then the 4th of February, but we're waiting for the final stamp of approval to get those um, so that you can get the boosters that were approved yesterday for um, teenagers and then um, those who would like to get this is for the whole community by the way not just the kids and then also um, you know some kids and their families who may want to get vaccinated um, or boosted so I'll be you know pushing that out once we get that information um, it, you know, this month they were supposed to, you know, I remember the last time I recorded the commissioner kind of held things off until the 15th of this month. He still hasn't made an announcement, but one can guess that um, masking protocols are going to stay in place for the month of January. I, I'm going to guess that. Um, and they're not going to do any motions to it uh, away from that. The, the state did do a push right before break and a break to get all teachers with a rapid test. Um, in that turn, you may have read a news article or two about that. That turned into a fiasco um, because the suppliers um, apparently did not were not uh, upfront about what they had in hand and what they could deliver on time. So there was a lot of running around. We did distribute um, on Sunday to those teachers who wanted them um, individual PCRs if they wanted to have it take one prior to returning to school or to save it for a later date if they had no known. Um, contact or we're feeling just fine and are vaccinated. So, and if they didn't pick them up there on Sunday, they, we gave them out on Monday morning. So uh, we were able to do that. And then obviously we're waiting on pool testing now. So any questions regarding, you know, COVID, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that I take for granted that I know that people may have questions on. Um, Did you say where the, those vaccine bus clinics that you're going to have, where, what school they're at? I know one's in Deerfield because the Deerfield Board of Health is putting it together. The last I heard, they were talking with Fran and they were talking about doing one at Waitley. And that would be the Board of Health running that clinic, not the school, um, but using our facilities. So I'm saying that kind of out loud so that sometimes it's even more inviting so that people who aren't directly part of the school community can feel um, open to come. It'll happen outside of school hours um, as well. So they're looking at that. That 14 is a half day. And then the other one they're looking at starting in the afternoon and going into the evening. So for those who can't make it during uh, the work, regular work hours. So, yep. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else have any questions? Nope. Okay, so now we're on to new business and the presentation of the FY23 draft budget. Take it away, Shelly. Okay, so I did send out a summary to you all. Um, I'm happy to share my screen if you think that's helpful. Yes? No? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I can never remember how to do it. Oh, don't worry about it. No, it's good. I got it. I just have to find the right button. Can you see that? Is it too small? Good on my screen. Okay. Good. Yeah, I can see it. That's Great. good. All right. So uh, we go into each budget year looking to uh, build a budget that's fiscally responsible, but also needs-based and student-centered. Uh, we take input from key stakeholders, and that includes uh, administrative staff that are responsible for specific departments such as technology, um, curriculum, or special education, and obviously work with principals. So Chrissy has had her 
hands in this as well already in our first draft, um, and then we bring it to you all for further discussion. So what we're presenting here tonight is a level service budget, meaning that we pull in all of the same services, staffing, and programs from the prior year. Uh, and then we look at existing expenses, like I mentioned when Bob brought up earlier that we were short on a particular account. We look at a three-year history to see if we've routinely gone over in a particular expense line and make adjustments for the next fiscal year. Um, sometimes that is up or down. You know, there might be an account that is typically over budgeted and we haven't spent the funds for a few years. So we'll reallocate that money to an account that has gone over so that we're not actually increasing. Um, but there could be some potential increases with that. Uh, so we look at those expenses. Uh, we look at contractual and non-contractual wage adjustments. So right now you all know we're in negotiation for IAs and teachers for Union 38. But in order to build the budget, we have to put in a placeholder. So there are funds in there earmarked, even though we haven't settled on a contract agreement yet. Uh, and then we look at wage increases also for administrative staff uh, or anyone else who is on an individual contract, as well as our non-union personnel, um, which is custodians, cafeteria, um, secretaries, people like that. Uh, and then we have to look at new requests and priorities as well. Um, so there might be new initiatives that Chrissy believes we need to put into place or other administrative staff believe that we need to put into place. So those are all the things that we consider when we build this budget. Uh, and for Waitley, that results in an increase with all of our wants and needs for next year of 8.33% in this first draft. And we recognize that that is not a number that's really feasible for the town and the school certainly will be working on bringing that number down. That'll be part of our discussion tonight because um, we do recognize that, you know, the town would like us to be closer to two and a half percent. Two and a half percent is probably not a, a reasonable number every single year. Uh, I'm going to show you some data that'll give you what the prior years have been. And, you know, we've tried to do our best to stay around that number, but it's just a hard point for us to start with given, you know, at least COLA increases we're looking at between two and 3% year to year anyway. And then you add in other expenses. It's just really hard for us to stay at two and a half. Uh, so let's look Sorry. at that. Oh, go ahead. If I could just jump in. So what I want to kind of say out loud to people who are looking at the 8.33 and said you guys are crazy. Um, this is the approach that we're taking here. So I'm trying to do a really transparent approach of what the administration is looking at. And, you know, we, we don't want to just, we can't afford it. So never ask for it and never run it by you folks about what's going on and what's, what's in our heads and also the different expenditures and that kind of thing. So it's really, while we know that's not a realistic number, we could chop it all down and you never see that, but we really wanted to be transparent and have the starting line be like where we start. And we're, after we have our conversation, so you can see an idea that before a budget gets to the final number, that there is reductions in, in a lot of different ways. And you'll see as Shelly goes through this, there are some challenges this year um, that is going to make this budget season a little bit more, I think it's the word difficult, but it's going to take a little more work than some of our kind of plug and play budgets that we've seen in the past. Thanks, Terrence. Thanks. All right, so let's take a look at what makes up that 8.33%. Uh, so these are our, our key factors here. Uh, there is a request for a $20,000 increase in faculty salaries, which would provide an additional day of PE for each classroom and increase occupational therapy support driven by student need. Um, so both of those positions are currently part-time in Waitley. So we would be looking to increase the FTE there, not to full-time um, for either of them, but it, it would increase the salaries. Um, this is a big one, and this next one keys in on what Darius was saying, that there are some challenges this year. So uh, the way that this first budget is built, um, we do look at the revolving funds as part of the process, which includes school choice um, and early childhood, as well as school lunch for Waitley. We have had three teachers being paid from school choice historically over the last few years. Our school choice numbers, which we're going to look at, um, I show you a summary I think it's in another screen. I can pull up after this. Um, our, our revenue has been coming down. We have had savings over the last couple of years because of the, how tight we've been in our budget. So we've been able to build up our reserves, but we're overspending what we're bringing in for revenue year to year. That needs to start to shift. Uh, so in order to 
make the bottom line for the school choice revolving fund so that it is not depleted, I'm recommending that we pull one full-time teacher off of school choice and place them onto budget. And I understand $80,000 is a lot of money for the budget to handle and we can talk about whether or not we move that full teacher or half of that teacher and discuss how to uh, do this over a couple of years if that's what the committee would prefer to do. But that is a driving factor of that 8.33% increase and something that we need to work on to be more fiscally responsible. Additionally, we have a $35,000 increase for our out of district placement. This actually came up in the current fiscal year. Uh, our school choice funds last year had more money at the end of the year than we anticipated because we had some savings. So our expenses were lower than we planned. So we've been able to use those funds this year to cover that $35,000. However, same scenario as I just explained above, we don't want to overload school choice. So our starting point is to put that $35,000 onto the budget for next year. Um, there is some transportation costs also associated with that. Um, but Karen and I are still working on those numbers as well. So that 35,000 is strictly the cost for the student to attend another school. Uh, one other thing that's important to note is the increase in Waitley's central office cost share percentage. So that is driven by enrollment and Waitley's enrollment has gone up compared to the other schools, which means that the cost share percentage goes up. And while 0.68 doesn't seem like a lot, when you're talking about uh, central office expenses from superintendent's office, business office, special education office, facilities, um, IT, you know, some of those are some big expenses. So it adds up in the end and it is having an impact on the bottom line. And then, like I mentioned above, we have our contractual and non-contractual wage adjustments. So those are the major factors that are impacting that uh, our budget to start at 8.33%. I have some uh, data analysis here. I'm not going to go over. I did send this to you all. So if you have questions about any of it, I'm happy to uh, take specific questions. But what I gave you um, for data to look at was function code, which is something that DESE sets for us. So there's different categories that they require us to report on. And this is how our budget is built. Uh, so you can see administration, which is really um, uh, superintendent, school committee, and business office. Uh, and then it goes there for education instruction, which also includes uh, principal's office in the 2000 line. 3000 is student services and includes things like uh, health services. So the nursing department, uh, school lunch, um, athletics, although that doesn't apply to Waitley, that's just frontier, and uh, transportation. So our busing, if we need um bus monitors or crossing guards, things like that. Operations and maintenance is really primarily facilities and uh, technology for anything that is uh, infrastructure. So it's not curriculum software or anything like that. Uh, benefits and insurance under the 5000 code. Um, so that doesn't include any benefits that the town pays. That's just strictly things that the school pays. So it's retirement payouts. Um, insurances, if we pay a building insurance in Waitley, that would be included in there. So this number for Waitley is actually a relatively small amount compared to um, a, school, a larger school district such as Frontier where you're paying all of the benefits under that line. And then the 9,000 is anything out of district placement. Um, and then I did give you other data of where the increase is coming from. So 73.34% is related to salaries and wages. And then the remaining 41,000 roughly is for non-salary expenditures. And then I also gave you a breakdown of uh, total salaries. So um, administrative salaries, you can see the amount there is 58,874. That's 2.97% of the overall budget. Uh, so just wanted you to have some data to look at, but again, I'm happy to take questions if anyone has them. Uh, general fund historical information. So this is where I was saying, you know, you can see in FY19, we tried to stay at two and a half percent. 20 was up quite a bit, which if I uh, remember correctly, and Chrissy and Darius, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe was um, 
to again try to get some expenses off of school choice at that time and there wasn't any major new initiatives then so you know this was obviously looked at a few years back um, and unfortunately with the pandemic and you know needing to be creative with how we're paying for certain things and increase expenses um, we've kind of slipped back into where we're overexpending so we're in that same boat here 21 uh, was level funded. If you remember, there was no increase to the town and last year we went in at two and a half percent. So that's just some historical information. And then I did also give you enrollment data. That's important for us to be looking at and talking about here. Um, so the next year's budget is based on the previous year's numbers when it comes to the state determining how much chapter 70 money you're getting per student. So the positive side is that uh, Waitley is coming back up, you know, at 123 versus 116 kids from the prior year. Uh, but, you know, we're still down if you look historically back over several cycles. Um, so something to consider there uh, when looking at enrollment data is uh, teacher to student ratio or IA to student ratio. You know, if we're talking about needing to um, increase or, or if we're asking for more staffing, it's good to look at the enrollment numbers there. Um, and then finally, I give you a, just a percentage increase here. So you have for a point of reference, 1% of the current year's budget, an increase would be 18,298 and so on from there. So um, when we're looking at 8.33, you know, it's easy to do that math of how we got to that number. Uh, so that is the presentation portion. I'm happy to take questions if anyone has them before we talk about um, steps for reduction, because we will need to come into the next month's budget discussion with a lower number. I got a question. The $35,000 for out of district, how many more years do you think we're going to have to be paying that $35,000? Uh, Chrissy, is the student a fourth grader this year? He's in fifth grade. Fifth grade. So okay. next year would be the final year unless, you know, something unforeseen comes up. But that would go away after FY23, assuming we didn't have any other out of district placements. All right. Thank you. Shelly, under um, the general general fund increase in salary analysis, where it says seventy three percent. Oh, never mind. I never mind. I figured out my own question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this so that we can talk about next steps. So we do need, like I said, to go into the February next budget update with uh, a more realistic number. Um, you know, like I said, we know we can't be at 8.33% and the town uh, is looking for some information right around the time of our next meeting, you know, because they're doing their budget planning process. So uh, we definitely want to work on bringing this down um, and we, you know, do have a few ideas for reduction. Uh, one of the easiest things is to take some of those new requests off the table to begin with. Um, and that would be strictly financial related. Chrissy could argue as to why we need to keep those things in. Uh, but removing the additional day of PE and the increased OT services combined would save us about $18,000 or 1% of the budget. So now we're down to 7.33 if we move those right off the top. Um, the out of district placement, we could fund that through school choice just like we're doing this year. Um, I know I just talked about not overspending on school choice, but it's actually a good spot for expenses such as this to be paid because they're not long term. So we would be looking at just one more year of that $35,000 hitting the budget. And then in FY24, we'd pull those funds back off and have additional money built up in school choice. Um, so that $35,000 is almost a 2% reduction. Uh, one other thing to consider is reducing the building's general repairs line. Um, so if you remember, Waitley had a building's general repairs account for expenses, 
And then it also had an expense account for the Christian Lane building from when central office was in Christian Lane. Those two accounts together total uh, $41,000 in the budget. It is the largest building repair line of any of the elementary schools, um, and it is rarely fully expended. So the idea here would be to reduce that down by 20,000 uh, to bring it more in alignment with the other elementary schools and have it based on our true expenditures. So if we were to do that, another 20,000 is a little more than 1%. There's also some other expense lines in the budget that are slightly over their actuals. So as I mentioned, when we look back at each expense category, if something is overspent, we might reallocate it to another line or just keep it in the budget for safety reasons because you never know if something is gonna come up. Um, those might include uh, things like our utilities or our heat um, also includes uh, security for the building. You know, it's, um, we have the new key fob system, so we build in some funds in case we have to have any repairs or updates to that, just as, a, as an example. So I do believe we could reduce another half of a percent, um, not a ton of money, but if we could cut another nine to 10,000, you know, that definitely helps us out. So at that point, if you all were in agreement to do those things, we're looking at dropping two, three, four, five percent almost with those reductions, uh, which gets us around three and a half um, as our next draft. So, you know, still would have some work to do. Um, from there, we'd be looking at different things like being creative with um, some of the other account lines or more creative with staffing than we currently are. Um, but those would be my recommendations for the first starting point. Um, Shelley, I have a question. Um, if we did not do the additional PE and occupational therapy, um, would the if we didn't increase the occupational therapy, would would some students not be getting what they should be getting for OT? I'm going to let Chrissy speak to that. No, that. Um, one of the things we're noticing as a result of last year um, with kids being at home for a good part of the previous school year and then in and out of school last year, um, we're noticing a, a lot of kids who are struggling in the, that area of occupational therapy, a lot of fine motor difficulties. So um, the thinking was to bring someone in for an additional day so that there is more time available if we're adding this to anyone's IEP or um, any new students who don't have an IEP yet show as needing this service, but also for that person to be able to go in and do whole class activities, um, particularly in the lower grades, to try and shore some of that up for, for all the kids. But no, we wouldn't, we would definitely not be um, shortchanging anyone on a service if we did not add that additional day. Okay. Yeah. If we did remove that, maybe we could consider that for the following year. I, I don't, I don't know if that would be a possibility then either. Um, and Shelley, you had mentioned the transportation costs associated with that out of district placement. I've seen some transportation costs on your weekly um, numbers you send, and those can that can be high too. I don't know for this if it would be, but. Yeah, transportation has increased tremendously for special education runs, and we're fortunate in Waitley that Karen has been able to work directly with the family. Karen Ferrandino, our special education director, has been able to work directly with the family regarding transportation. Um, so she does not think that there's going to be a significant increase for Waitley like some of the other schools are going to see. Um, so we'll we'll be fortunate in okay. that. So if there's no other questions about that, I'd like to share my screen again and have you look at the school choice projections, uh, because I think that that paints a good picture as to why we're saying or I'm saying that we need to move 80,000 off. I, I want you to have a good idea of what those numbers look like and see that it is a necessity for us to start to make that move. Okay. 
I have to find the right document. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not going to read through all of these numbers, but you can clearly see here that our revenue has gone down over the last couple of years, and that reduction is um, not necessarily due to number of kids, but based on special education increment claims. So the change from 20 to 21, our numbers didn't drop significantly. The end of year number in 21 was 42 students compared to 43 in the prior year, but there was a significant increase or decrease in our special education increment claims. So when we have a school choice student who is receiving special education services, uh, the school gets pretty much dollar for dollar if they need um, any kind of special therapies, transportation, a one-to-one -one IA, we receive that money back over the $5,000 that we normally get for school choice students. However, when that student leaves the district, there's also a downside to that, that you're losing that revenue. Uh, so that's why there's been a pretty big drop. Um, and in 20 and 21, our expenses were projected to actually be higher than what's presented here as actuals but we were able to have savings from general fund and reallocate to school choice for future use. Uh, starting off this current year, FY22, with 350,000. I am expecting that that 174 number is going to go down because you can clearly see we're down 10 students, but this number right now is based on the state gives us the funds from June of the prior year as the estimate. So they will readjust. So this bottom line could actually be less than 188,000. And it's a little bit of a moving target because it the number right now is 32 students um, from last June. We're current year at 37 and come this June, you know, that number could change again if Chrissy has anyone come in out of um, school choice between now and the end of the year. So it's a moving target. Plus, we also don't know the special education increments at this point. So my point in saying that is that that 188 could fluctuate. It could go up slightly, could go down. I would expect that it would go down since our numbers are, are definitely lower. Um, but you can see that we are overexpending the revenue coming in. So we're using more than we're bringing. And if we continue on that pattern for next year, that 222000 that's with taking the $80,000 teacher out, would leave us with $139,000, um, assuming that these projections work out the way that I have them planned at the end of next year. Um, and that does not yet include the 35,000 for the out of district placement. So if we bump that back to this funding source, we'd be about 110,000 based on these current projections. So it's still a good number for a small school. It, it doesn't make me feel like, you know, we're in dire need to make more change. I think if we could move that 35,000 over for one more year and then recoup that in FY24, I think we're being fiscally responsible because that's what these funds are for. They're meant to be used for these um, non-recurring expenditures. So a couple years use of an out of district placement of school choice money is a smart decision. Um, but I wanted you to see why I think it's important to move that $80,000 teacher salary that is a recurring expense off because if we do that expense for one more year, there isn't going to be much of a surplus or a rainy day fund in the event that we have something else come up that's unforeseen. So that's why I'm making the recommendation to move that teacher off. Any questions about those numbers or that explanation? Shelly, when you say a teacher, is it a teacher or is it a staff member at the school? It's actually a teaching position. Uh, okay. It might be... Um, might be someone, I can't remember if it's a, a speech or psychologist, something like that, but it's someone who's on the teacher contract. It's a full okay. teacher salary. So that's where we're at for now. I, I love your feedback, guidance, questions, you know, anything else for Chrissy regarding those new positions. Um, it'd just be good to see where you'd like us to go from here with the next draft. 
Um, I'm wondering, Bob, that committee that you were on for the um, the COVID money, was that, were we getting any, was that going to help with anything? It, it, it looks, I mean, right now we haven't had another meeting because of the holidays and stuff. And I sent Brian a message uh, a couple of days ago telling him I was going to be, you know, out of the state from the 19th to the 25th. And because we were going to have schedule another meeting. So I was just trying to give him heads up on it and stuff. And I was trying to get, I got some feedback from a couple of uh, town people about places that we could, maybe could use the money. I mentioned to Darius a little bit about it that, you know, maybe instead of a, a physical thing that we, um, that we help out with, you know, more of an educational part of it as using the money versus, okay, we're just going to use it to build a new playground or something like that. But this is some feedback from townspeople that maybe we could use the money for, you know, because of COVID the last couple of years, maybe some of the kids are behind and, you know, maybe we can use that money to bring them up to par, you know, bring them up to speed and stuff like that. That was, you know, the only thing I've heard so far from anybody in town or, like I said, we haven't met. There's, there's 400, there's 450,000, I think it's roughly 450,000 coming to the town, uh, 200 and something thousand now, and probably another 200 and something next year, maybe, or I, I'm not sure on the, on the divvying part of the 450, but that's what, you know, that's what we're going to be having the town all okay. together. So Bob, there is, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, sorry, Beth. Oh, sorry. I just had a question for Bob about that. Um, yeah. Are you going to have to present something like an idea from us or a plan at the next meeting? I have, I, we only, we've only met once. And, and like I said, we're going to have another meeting. I'm, I'm not sure if I, if I'm supposed to have anything physically in my hands to like present, but they're getting ideas from, I guess, instead of just keeping it to the uh, people who elected officials of the town getting together on this money, I guess they're opening it up to other people in the town to try to get some ideas so they can bring all these ideas together and then, and then work on the money. I, I don't think this is going to be our last meeting. So, but I think I mentioned to Darius a few weeks ago about, about this, um, you know, that's the only thing I could tell you right now. I mean, I, okay. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Let me talk Darius. I can't tell if you're going to say <laughs> something. So two things. I was going to, but I knew you were going first. Well, one is I, I and this is why I was saying, correct me if I'm wrong, Darius, but the use of the funds for this particular money is really restricted. There's not a lot of opportunity to throw it at the wide variety of things that we've been doing with some of the other COVID funds, such as the ESSER grants. Um, so that's one comment. The other comment would be um, we possibly could fund the additional OT salary with that money. Um, but that doesn't help our budget necessarily. You know, it gets the school that they need and drops off that 0.5. So, you know, it helps bring our 8.33 down. The third thing is, I think you submitted a request to uh, Waitley already, didn't you, Darius? Didn't Brian send us a form we had to yeah. fill out? Yeah. Yeah, so I submitted capital requests, and I said that in some of those you may be able to be squeezed out of that grant, depending on how flexible they're going to be with, you know, seeing you know, uh, a new dishwasher being a sanitation device because it is. Um, but, you know, it, it, one could say it's not. Uh, so it'd be curious. It's kind of like on the then. So I said, you know, they could take that off the capital requests, therefore freeing up money from the town. It's all, I mean, we're all got all these silos that all come into one town budget. Um, and so, um, you know, the idea that, you know, putting the OT on, you know, if we could do it with the grant for a year, we just have to be prepared as a, as a, as a 
body of leadership here that it's a one year position. You mean it's all it needs if you're going to go into you know to as you know obviously make up distance. I, I do want to squish the, uh, the the idea that you know our students are behind. Um, they just where they need to be. You know, we're getting them weekly scores were um, pretty much amazing in their MCAS scores. And we're going to use a, a status um, of what was pre-COVID and after COVID. Um, yeah, yes, there's students that need additional, um, you know, had some loss in those years, but um, we are not two years behind as was re- somehow was said in the community at one point. Um, the kids are making good progress and, um, you know, you don't catch up two years in one month. Um, if there is any loss, we're, 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 we're addressing that in the day-to-day stuff. And they'll, by the time they leave Waitley, they should be where everybody else was when they left Waitley. Um, so just want to say, I say that a lot. So I mean, we can look at that and, you know, the, so this also transitions into, so I had a conversation with Brian, um, you know, with the you know, town administrator today regarding the request that you probably all saw from the, from the finance committee about wanting to see our budgets and such. And I basically kind of said like, you know, we're not going to have a budget, you know, done until, or at least a strong draft until after the February meeting, because we had to have this conversation. Um, And, you know, the finance committee, um, I recommended that, you know, he suggests the finance committee that perhaps they send a a liaison to that meeting. They could watch this meeting, get an idea for them to understand. Um, I was very blunt about there's, there's a disconnect. Finance committee may not, I don't want to say what the finance committee knows and doesn't know, but school finance, and we don't know what the town finances are. So we have these two things where we make up as a full school, you know, 60 to 70% of the town's budget, but we're not talking to each other on a regular basis on what the needs are and, and how they want to aim different things. So I said they could either, you know, come to that meeting, uh, our first meeting in, in February, um, which I think is like the 8th, um, and they want us to have the following week for us to go to them. Um, I said, again, I also said that they need to reach out to you folks as a committee because you are the decision makers. You know, if you want to go forward with an 8% increase, that's your decision. I'll apply where, well, I wouldn't suggest it, but it is really your decision. And, and you have that. That's why they have these different committees set up. So, you know, um, whatever we do, I think moving forward, I, I do want to set up a communication where we, you know, if there is a pool of money that they want to steer toward us to remove a pool of money we're taking away somewhere else, let's have that conversation. Um, makes sense to me anyway. So um, anyway, that's so Maureen, you know, you getting an email today from him was a probably result of that conversation. So, you know, whatever we can set up, and I know there's some new people on the finance committee as well. So we can see what they would like to do because, um, you know, the, your budget is your decision, but how the two intertwine does require a conversation. Right. If we do invite them to our next meeting, we could have this discussion at the beginning of the meeting. Yeah, I mean, I really like them to see, you know, a big chunk of this money this year we're talking about is to get us off the choice so that we don't get, you know, um, you don't get stuck. I also think we're in this position because we were very financially um, conservative the last two years because there was a lot of unknowns when we developed our budget to do a zero based because the world was going to end um, financially. I don't want to go down the other. Uh, you know, it was, remember it was going to be, it was going to be 20% increases or decreases in funding from the state. And so we basically said, okay, we're going to kind of, that would have been a great year to come off of um, school choice. You know, I mean, if we could, you know, but instead we were saying, you know, we got to give the savings to the town because we're going to be falling. There's a financial cliff coming. Then last year we were also very conservative where we could have also done, you know, if we've done 20,000 each year, that wouldn't have been a big deal. Instead, now we're stuck, you know, with a large margin election. So I want to kind of say that out loud, you know, that we were, you know, we were very good the last couple of years. And so if we have to go a little bit higher this year, it's because of that. I mean, if you don't, there's a natural growth to our budget and it can't just be zero. So anyway, so those are the conversation. I would love to hear their perspective on what they think we should do, um, you know, as well. So. Who's going to talk next? <laughs> Maureen's going to say, okay, very good. <laughs> donation for so should we invite them to the next meeting or? Yeah. I would, I would say one, either, either that or can they send a liaison so that they can get an idea of what's going on? Although they probably won't have a meeting between 
our meeting and the next meeting is the following Tuesday. Um, I guess the conversation is, you know, what do they want to do? How do they want to set that up? Because mm -hmm. we could also go through about where we're at, have a stronger draft and then go to them with the draft and then explain how we got there. That's another route too. Yeah. But it all, it all depends on the, the thing I don't know is where's the town right now? You know what I mean? If right. we come to them, because you, you saw where those numbers may land anywhere between, we're going to be between three and 3.5 or, you know, around there. If they can't afford above three, they better come and have a conversation with us because we're probably coming, giving them something between three and 3.5, I would imagine. You know, so let's, you know, if they think they can absorb that, given them where we're at, then maybe we decode them after we make that decision. But um, do you know if the chair is the same? Um, Beth knows the chair very well. I know. Uh, yeah. You want, he, <laughs> do you want me to invite him to the next meeting? I mean, you say no to you. <laughs> that kind of makes sense, right? For him to hop on our next meeting. Or one of them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, or encourage them just to watch the, I mean, if they just watch the 10 minutes of Shelly's presentation tonight, we'll give an idea okay. of where we're at. And then that would get them a very much an idea of where they they think they should know as well. I think that would make sense as well. You could probably share your your paperwork that you have, Beth. You could share it with them and yeah. you know, just trying to do it. I mean, my personal opinion about inviting people like finance people to our meetings we do have a public meeting that all the town officials are always invited to, and they never come except for one person sometimes, and that's your dad. And we have the same problem at Frontier, which is four towns. We have a big budget. We have a public a public forum, and only a, a one or two people show up, and then they want us to go to the, every single town to explain the same thing that we just explained during the public comment. Which it, I'm public sorry, hearing. you mean the public hearing? Yeah, public hearing. Excuse me. I just think it's a waste of time sometimes. You know, come when we invite you. That way, we're not. You know, to go to four towns for you guys, all the meetings you guys have. I, I you know, come to our public com, come public meeting, uh -huh. our hearing, and and then you'll get everything. So we can ask them to view this. 10 minutes of this meeting and then we can ask them if if one of them wants to come to the next meeting or something else. I put it in there, put it in their court and say, what would they like to do? Yeah. You know, based on the information they see there and where we're landing this, do they need, do we need to have that type of meeting? Um, you know, it, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, because it's difficult. We don't, because I don't know where the town stands, you know, and they may not know where they stand either because we don't have the governor's budget yet as well. So, you know, we're developing this out of, you know, basically building our budget off of last year. Mm -hmm. Frontier, they're going to want to know where Frontier stands, and we got to wait until the governor releases his budget, which is usually at the end of January. Um, and then we'll have the idea what the assessments will be like for the towns. But, so they're not going to know what Frontier's going to be taking, um, you know, basically taking off the top before, you know, this budget. So, and we can't really develop Frontier's budget until we can see how it affects the town. So it's kind of, you know, we well, I think they'll, go ahead. They'll, they'll get a really good idea of where we stand if they see this probably 15, 20 minutes now. <laughs> yeah. They don't, yeah. They can stop watching. You can stop watching now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, any other comments? I was just going to say to Beth, Beth, if you don't want to talk to your dad about this, he's invited me to get together with him and talk. So, if you like, I can make, since we're both retired, I can make some time and, and get together with them and stuff, if you like. Yeah, you guys should go have lunch. And okay. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll use Beth as a secret weapon in case we have problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to acceptance of the Yankee Candle donation and a vote. So... Do I do that? Does so, Yankee Candle um, generously has given us the, uh, the uh, I guess, a seasonal holiday gift of four thousand dollars to um, Wheatley Elementary, and to be spent at the, I believe, the discretion of the principal. Is that how it's worded? Um, and Chrissy, um, we've we've always tried to do 
we haven't always we actually some of that old money and savings because of where we're at, but we try to use it as some sort of splash that we can do to improve curriculum and do things that we can't normally get out of the regular budget. So Chris, you have any thoughts already about where you're headed with that? Well, the first time that they gave us um, a donation, we were piloting different pieces of robotics equipment, coding equipment for our younger kids. Um, and then, so that was the holiday season of 2019, and we know it happened shortly into 2020. So that kind of fell apart. So we just recently ordered the things that we wanted to purchase with the first check that, that came in. So it's probably going to be something along those lines, um, coding and um, robotics. One of the things that's been clear this year after last year is that nobody wants anything that's going to add screen time to our kids. So um, it's sort of a shift in the kinds of things that we're looking at. We can still address those same um, areas of STEM without putting kids in front of a screen all day. Doesn't it involve coding? No? Yes. Co well, there are coding activities, lots of coding activities um, and materials you can use that don't have anything to do with a screen, believe it or not. It's, okay. it, it builds up the thought process of coding. Excellent. So do I hear a motion to accept, if there's no other comments, do I hear a motion to accept the um, $4,000 gift from Yankee Candle? So moved. Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Excellent. Thank you, Yankee Candle. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Did we send a letter out yet to them? I thought so. I figure I ask. Okay, so now we're on to reports. We've already had the principal's report. Um, let's see. I just want to say the Capital Improvement Planning Committee is now trying to schedule some meetings um, for January, February. And um, I sent that list that Shelly sent to us after the last meeting. I don't know if Shelly had sent it to them as well. Um, let's see. And to Bob and Beth, Lynn Sibley, just a reminder that she sent that email about that campaign finance form. Yes. Um, we just have to... Do we just have to go sign it, right? Yeah, and just bring it to her. Okay. Um, probably nobody has spent money on their campaign this year. I spent thousands. <laughs> um, oh, also, um, CPAC has one of their business meetings coming up on Tuesday, January 18th at 6 p.m. I don't remember where we stood with that. If anyone, they, they wanted a school committee member from each school committee to attend. I don't know if anybody knows if they can make that meeting. I'm, I'm just about going to California there, so I can't go on the 18th. Okay. So. okay. Um, I can probably go to that if no one else can do that. The 18th, you said? Yeah, it's at 6 p.m. Yeah, I'm away for work that week. Okay, Sorry. I'll take care of that one. I think there might be one more. I can't remember. Um, and I did, there was that meeting, I think before the last, before the no November meeting, or maybe there was another one in December about that marijuana farm. I did get um, some sheets from the Cannabuster. It's their fogging system they're going to use. And I do have a contact for a guy from there. Um, I, I don't really understand this form. It's, you know, a safety data sheet. They said it was safe, but I just don't like things yeah. being fogged right next to the school. Um, Is it, did it say if it was organic? It's iodine. Like. And I thought it was to prevent odor. So I don't know how. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I, might, I might contact the guy. I also talk with the planning board, um, remember the planning board, who happens to work at the school at times. Um, and he basically outlined that it's, that it's an iodine mist that they send the air through and apparently it connects to the smells that it gives off and therefore not allowing it to travel out. Where all that iodine goes, I don't know um, how that part of the system works. But so, you know, they were looking at that. I let them know that the concern the school has is any obviously environmental disruption to the playground. You know, kids outside it's having to smell odors um, during, because it can be bad during what they say during uh, blossom season or mm -hmm. bud season. Or, so that's, you know, that's obviously our major concern. I wonder if I wonder if Yankee Candle may use the same type of system because I don't I don't smell Yankee Candle like like we used to have it around here. So they they must use some type of system. Maybe we can find out what kind of system they use or whatever if it, if it helps us at all. Sometimes there's a strong smell from Yankee Candle. Is it still? This morning there was. There was, it wasn't strong, but and it was an, it was a nice smell. It was like being at home with a candle burning, but they, they certainly, what I'm thinking of is if, if that same amount of scent escapes from a blossoming marijuana plant, I, I won't be having those pleasant feelings I had when I was walking into the scent of Yankee Candle. Maybe we can get Yankee to release their scents at the same time <laughs> so that we can have a peach blossom marijuana smell in the air. <laughs> um, okay and then for the collaborative they're working on their new strategic plan they had a five-year plan which was extended to six years and so now they're working on the next strategic plan and they hired consulting firm strategy matters and also um I missed part of in this meeting, but there's some kind of restructuring going on in the business office or in the financial department. And um, they are hiring that consulting firm. I think it's the same one the school had when we had a consultant business manager. I recognize the name TMS. of that lady. TMS, Judy Hall. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then they're talking about restructuring that department maybe splitting it into two different things because it's been for several years, it's been a lot of work for one person and a lot of hours and it's not sustainable. I guess. So that is what I have for my reports. Do you have anything Darius that you haven't already brought up? Um, no. Um, okay. I guess we just had negotiations going on. It's the last thing on my report. Um, we're making, you know, it's, it's going well, making progress. Um, nothing really I can report in an open meeting, but yeah. When's the next meeting? And the next meeting is. Um, I have it on my book here somewhere. On the 12th. Okay. And Frontier is the 10th. So if it, we're doing, you know, they're both at the same time, which is. Overwhelming for Shelly and I doing that in budgets, but um, we're doing well. Do you think that will there will be an agreement for that before our budget is due, or before we? Yeah, have that's to the game. That's the game plan, but um, we'll see where we're at. I think we're we're kind of like just getting into um, the, the money conversation on a more kind of you know fingers into it. So we'll we'll know in the next few meetings if it's gonna. It'd be a long game and a short game. Next, you know, maybe the next meeting we can go to an executive session, just have a little chit chat on our next couple of meetings and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, give you guys a follow up. Yeah. Okay. Before we all sign off, can Shelly and Darius, can you stay on for two seconds? I just got a couple of little questions. I know we have to go to another meeting at 5 30, but if you got two minutes, I would love to just chit chat with you for a second, if that's all right. Why don't you go to the executive link we gave you? That way, they got okay. down. Okay. Me also, Bob. Huh? Me too. Please. Okay. 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 I'll um, make a motion adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye.
We, we meeting ending at 5.05. Thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. Great night.